All right. When the ice melts in your drink immediately because it's too warm. The real struggle, Charlotte. Right? Hi, Celeste. Bang. Let's begin That's with what I thought. Explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. Oh, that's right. I don't have to do a lot of voice work this time because it's a trial. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Yay. Okay then. So, first off, <sighs> let's talk about the murder weapons. For the first case, I had an idea. I had hints at who the person was going to be. I got nothing here. First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. I'm really not enjoying that Sayaka picture right there. <sighs> Make your argument. Locker room dumbbell. Okay. Yes, it was. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. You think you have some proof that contradicts what I said? N no, I guess I was just trying to help, but not off to a good start. I need to think about it one more time. There must be a contradiction in their statement somewhere. Okay. That was my own fault, Phoenix, right? According to the Monokuma the killer used a blunt instrument, but yeah. what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. Oh, there you go. No, that's wrong. I guess I could have just waited that out. Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell found at the scene of the crime? It was covered in blood. And there was nothing else Everybody's got pink blood in this game. Kind of injury. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. You look at her head wound? Yeah, well, I look at your unnatural swimmer's boobs. If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. Is it? Because I have no idea. What? For real? Chihiro's killer is... The fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. That's not helpful, you dingus. Genocide Jack. The fiendish serial killer. Hey. Did he really kill Chihiro? Here you go, sweetie. No? Okay. A new element has been added to non-stop debates. Yes. For this debate, lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your reactions. Your truth bullets will disappear if they hit these lines, so think of them as obstacles in your debate. But there's a way to keep this white noise from getting in your way. Press the right mouse button to attach a silencer, which you can use to shoot down the white noise. However, if you shoot an actual remark with your silencer instead of the white noise, the time limit will decrease, so take careful aim when you have your silencer out. Oh, but if your action difficulty is set to gentle, white noise won't appear at all. 
in which case you can forget about the silencer and just focus on the situation in front of you. Good luck and have fun. I don't know what I have the difficulty set to. Make your argument. Genocide Jack case file. The culprit is Genocide Jack. Seriously? Case closed. As far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible. Why? What makes it impossible? Well, I mean, come on. There's just no proof for it. Unfortunately. Brick. I might know one reason he could be involved. What? Voss. I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. <sighs> what? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? It's a nice library. The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. Yeah. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Ooh, lust. <laughs> Good man. Ah, uh, no. It's actually blood lust. But more important... That's a matter of opinion. ...other characteristic. And it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? The other characteristic of every Genocide Jack case, which the world at large doesn't know, it has to do with the positioning of the body. I got it! Apparently, in every Genocide Jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. Yep. Oh come on! How did the culprit know about Stop this? making me only Stop making me look at this. Were aware of it. Why does the blood go up her skirt? Why does the blood from a head wound go up her skirt? Pat, why does the blood from a head wound go up her skirt? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm hearing I just heard that question like three times when we stopped the stream. Because I asked and it like four times. You asked why the blood goes up her skirt? Yes. I Look at that picture. Oh. Um. And why is it under her hair? It's a head wound, isn't it? Yeah. I never noticed. I have a problem here. Anyway, I'm going to go back to it. That was really bothering me. Got it. There's only one logical answer I can think of. Is there? It's because the culprit in this case is the real Genocide Jack. Um... No fucking way! I don't know that I agree You're with that. Genocide Jack is one of us? Yes. In fact, it's Toko. Uh, what? Je okay. Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. I guess that makes sense, but we just kind of... You just caught the shark in the air and then rode it to freedom. Blood of phobia. Hemophobia. Is Toko genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. That's not an answer. It's a riddle for sure, but I feel like I understand it. What it means for Genocide Jack to be Toko, but also to not be Toko? 
The answer is that she's not just one person, but multiple people, right? That is, uh... This is not the direction I expected this to go. Also... I think my phone charger broke. Uh, come here. <sighs> Hangman's Gambit. Okay. What am I spelling? I don't... Hold on. Okay. No, I don't know. I have no idea. Oh, schizo. What an uh, okay, fine, fine. Is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality? That's offensive, by the way. I think I read that somewhere in the file too. They thought that the suspect might have what did they call it? Dissociative identity disorder. Oh, okay, but still, go and say that about Mr. Kawa is perfectly acceptable. Is it? Yoko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. All right, I'll let you have that. <sighs> the only, the one thing that shows she could have a split personality it has to do with her behavior. Her behavior changed. You're talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then when she woke up. Blah, I'm fine, I'm fine. Wow, is that a dead body? Hey, are you dead? <laughs> she must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. The world has a front and a back, a top inning and a bottom, a sea of truth and a web of lies. This is quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. She was acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Domingo, <sighs> assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can't handle blood, and one that obviously can't. Blood. What's that smell? So when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? I won't let Genocide Jack have control. I'll just drive out the killer, drive out the murderous fiend. The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Uh, how? Yeah. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No, 
What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She told me a most interesting story. She said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. Yeah. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? Maybe. <laughs> but... This is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said she wouldn't tell anyone. What? You promised? I can't believe you lied! You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. This I is guess. the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. Oh? You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. Why do you know that? But in spite of that promise... I'm sorry. I couldn't keep our promise. But don't worry. Never again. I, I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. Times do I have to tell you? I never said that, but you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? I, I tried. I swear I tried to control it. <laughs> but your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. Uh, person? Oh, that's a luck. You don't need... Toko's body suddenly lunged backwards. Thunk! Like a baby that doesn't have head control. A huge thud echoed across the courtroom. But in the next second... Blah! I genocide Jill. What the heck? So you figured it out, huh? Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! What the fuck is this? What happened to you? Not Toko. That's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. One of them happens to be a serial killer. You should turn a blind eye to one small. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So intense. Like they say, sound and murder is mine, sound and murder is body. <laughs> this one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back demon. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun! It was too easy. <laughs> this is the murderous fiend Genocide Jack? This is... this is... this is beyond insane. think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you. I am the mastermind of all masterminds! Just kidding! Then, it's not true? Of course it's not true! How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid! And another thing. The police and government and society in the outside world are totally powerless! I mean, they just 
let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town! Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. Existence is pain. <sighs> this should be enough to <clears throat> This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about genocide death. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth. Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yes. Yeah. I could never believe a word you say, you monster. Maybe. Maybe she's totally right about that, but something's still bothering me. What she said. I need to get some more details about all of this. <clears throat> Is it more bullet time? Yes. <clears throat> bullet. Status of the dead body. Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone. You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking. When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. No, it what doesn't. What proof do we need? <laughs> Give it up. You killed her. I know what I need to hit. He's very wrong. Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a slight difference between the genocide jack cases and this one. <sighs> What's with the crying little one? I like her. I murder with passion. <clears throat> I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Yeah. Scissors. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. You know, something about that doesn't scan. I don't think that's... That's probably not what the original translation was. This is no creation of mine! Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. I thought that made sense. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. There's one clear difference between the murders. In the photos from the other Genocide Jack cases, look at the neck and the stomach. Here you'll see a clear difference. For one, the cause of death is different. In 
the genocide jack murders all the victims were killed the same way yep according to the case file they were all apparently killed with a pair of scissors <sighs> but Chihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, uh, yes. That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And there's more. One more conflicting detail. That's right. In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini... Then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce! Now I'm hungry. Could you please stop comparing killing people to cooking? No. So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? The second difference is related to how she was suspended. In the photos of the other Genocide Jack cases, all the other victims were stabbed through their hands. Here you'll see a clear difference. Remember what the killer used to suspend her? Bananas. Some kind of rope to hang her up by her wrists. What is your point? Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. Specifically, pairs of razor sharp scissors. And guess what? I used my own specially designed scissors for the murders. Why do you have special scissors? Like I said, I'm a professional, so naturally I'm very picky about the tools I use. And, 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 and you know what else? What else? He said there's two differences, but he's wrong. Big Mac. Big Mac? Are you referring to me? Listen up, Big Mac. There's actually one more difference. Okay. I mean, they were all men. Figure that out, and it'll be plain as death why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. <laughs> ravioli, ravioli. Don't murder the little loli. There was a pattern surrounding the Genocide Jack victims, and Chihiro didn't fit it. If you look at the names of every victim, what you'll notice is... I, I think I figured it out. Couldn't have killed Chihiro because Chihiro was a girl. Is it because Chihiro was a girl? Bingo, bullseye, right on the money! What are you talking about? In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. Ken, Tetsuhiro, Shoji, Kano, Takeshi, Komatsuna, Takafumi, Uchida. Takeshi again. Yuto. They were all guys? That's right! The people I kill with such passion and conviction are all adorable little men! I can't believe I said it! I'm so embarrassed! <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? I can't help it! I'm just a full throttle boy on boy fangirl! And the mopey side of me just hates it! But now I'm on the What? So since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little male, you wouldn't kill her? Would an Italian chef suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid. I want some ramen. I have too much passion and conviction to cross that line. That's the absolute reality of the one and only. We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby and your philosophy. But that's not all there is to it. It's a different matter entirely. When you're forced to kill in order to survive. Lowly curse. Lowly curse. <laughs> I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. And if by some fluke I did kill to survive, why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect. That does make some amount of sense. 
whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prized scissors. Who would go out of their way to use a big, stupid, heavy dumbbell? Yeah. Maybe you use the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school. She's gonna pull them out. Getting uncomfortable with the word scissors. Sure about that? Dun dun. She's fully equipped. That's right, so I can kill anywhere, anytime. Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my trusty scissors by my side? Go ahead, tell me I'm wrong. You can't, can you? Gutter dogs, all of you. I have no clue how to tie a good knot. <laughs> the rope's totally out of the question anyway. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on anymore. Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? <laughs> the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah. That's why we figured it had to be the real deal, and not some copycat killer or whatever. Actually, hold on. There is one person. One person who could have copied the Genocide Jack cases. Ah. Uh. Where is he? It's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. You already looked through the genocide jackpot before this all happened, hadn't you? Togami did it? Then, the reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. Well, that's too obvious, too, though. <laughs> Hey, what is wrong? No, I'm trying to help you. There you go. Try not to lose that. And the locker rooms. They're suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. Wouldn't you agree? Suspicious? It seems nobody's searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girls' locker room. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... Naturally, thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence, why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay, then, what's so strange about it? I'd like to know what's strange about it.
you know? Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class. There was a clear contradiction in what Biaka you just said. Oh, we didn't know about the body. A new element has been added to non-stop debates. Great. Next, we're going to add something called a truth flashback. If you aim at a weak spot and hold down the left mouse button. Dot, dot, dot. Hold on, hold on. Oh, now I got to get the mouse somewhere that I can click it. Ugh. then you'll memorize that weak spot. This memorized phrase can only be shot once as a single truth bullet. Okay. If you shoot or change the truth bullet, it will disappear from your truth cylinder. However, you can use this flashback feature as many times as you want. If you don't seem to have the answer to a lie or contradiction in your loaded truth bullets, it might be wise to memorize a different weak spot and use that to make your case. When's the best time to flashback? Well, you'll just have to use your keen wits, won't you? In this case, though, I will say that if you don't use a flashback, you won't be refuting anything. Well then, good luck and have fun. Monokuma file number two. So, you said Biakia was acting kind of weird before we found the file. But he was acting weird... If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room, you absolutely take it! Hmm. That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. So, of course, I would suggest we check the girls' locker room first. There was no time for pointless distractions. What's so strange about that? You wish you'd take me with you? Okay, let's make that clear. I know what I gotta do here. So, you said Biakia was acting kinda weird before we found the body. But he was acting weird... Oh, I get it. ...presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room. You absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. No, it's wrong! I'll tell you what's so strange about that, because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. True facts. So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. Nope. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Do you understand? Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Is it? Huh? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Show us. What's with Biakia's attitude? It's like he doesn't even care. I've got him cornered, but he's acting like it has nothing to do with him. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. There is. I think. There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? The difference between this case and other Genocide Jack murders. The evidence that proves Biakia is responsible is hidden in there. What could it be? Library desk lamp. Was it not? No. That's right. It 
absolutely was. Then there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? I'd never seen that rope before in my life. Obviously, somebody else must have had it hidden away somewhere. Damn it. Where'd you get it from, huh? I'd never seen that rope before in my life. No, I shoot the Obviously, fucking hell. Must have had it hidden away somewhere. Yes, have to go through all that dialogue again. The difference between the cases? You want me to explain it again? When I want to kill, I use my very own special scissors, and I use those same scissors to arrange the body. But. Chihiro was suspended with. It was some kind of rope. Was it not? That's right! It absolutely was! Then there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? I've never seen that rope before. No, it's wrong! It was a dirty trick on the white noises part. Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because, you see, that rope, or should I say, that extension cord? What? An extension cord? Yaku, you've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. And Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. That's really what you think? Then your conclusion is something like this? I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? He's doing it again. He's totally calm, totally unconcerned. As if he's not even involved. Come here, sweetie. Wait, not even involved. You if you think that's what happened. Come here. Uh, you take that off, you. Tell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Biapi is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. He kept calling this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win. Um. Sorry, but could we wait just a second? What's wrong? Uh, I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Oh, do we really need to? We've already decided who did it. I know, but still. There's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room then disguised my crime. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? Everything? Wait. What was that just now? Something's not right. Chihiro's body was definitely found in the girls' locker room. Can I really just accept what Byakuya said as the truth? No, I don't think so. There is something off about what he said. I got it. 
You say you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question how could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else. Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later, along with the rest of the murder scene. of the murder scene? Hey. 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 There you go. Okay. That was awfully specific. Please tell me you have a reason for saying all of that. Yeah. I believe I do. Hey, Biakia. Did you just... Did I just take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved to the crime scene, Biakia... Biakia, who'd been so confident up until now. Maybe Biakia never even realized that the actual scene of the crime could have been somewhere else. Hey! Don't just move on without permission! What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. Evidence that shows the murder took place somewhere else. Yeah, there's a couple things. There was something that was switched between the boys' and girls' locker rooms. I got it. The proof that she was killed somewhere else is the poster that's hanging in each locker room. Your proof is some posters? Yeah. The poster in the girls' locker room was a picture of a big boob supermodel. <laughs> but don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> I mean, maybe? Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had... A poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. What are you doing? Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boy's locker room. What is with the fussing? Alright, hold on a second, Pat. I'll be back in a couple minutes.
All right, sorry about that. We had a bit of a fuss pot situation. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? Makes sense to me. And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker room. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sakura? You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? Yes. Protein coffee? Delicious. I was in the girls' locker room earlier. I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. No, it's not that the stain was scrubbed away. It was moved. Stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. Hey. Yes. But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible, don't you think? In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but why would the culprit bother doing that? Huh? Why would they go through all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boy's locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boy's locker room in the first place? Million dollar question. To get into the locker room, you have to swipe your e-handbook across the card reader device. But Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. 
She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. No, she did have a way, and I can tell you what it was. I highly doubt that. Shut up! I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it. Is he right? Could she really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Broken E Handbook. <clears throat> We found it in the main hall, there's no doubt what it was. Is it really possible? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah, I got it! She must have Why is the white noise purple? She was the ultimate programmer after all. I'm sure that would have been no problem for her. No, I don't think that's it. The thing that was in the main hall. Huh? What thing? I'm talking about Leon's handbook. No, it's wrong. Break. No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh. Well, then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. Plus, isn't there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Yup, yup, yup! Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then, she must have hacked her, like I said. She used her ultimate programmer skills and... <laughs> you can't fix an e handbook. The instant you open one up, the security buzzer starts glaring. So, if she didn't use Leon's handbook... She didn't modify her own handbook. Maybe Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just wrong? No. It seems like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. So I guess so. Hey. Come on. <sighs> Can you not? I need you to go to sleep. It is so late. Can we not vote? Is that it then? Chihiro was killed in the girls' locker room, and Byakuya is the one who did it. Really? But still, I don't know what else I can do. Hold on a second. I agree with you, though. I think you're on the right track. What the? You finally decide to open your mouth, and that's what you've got to say? There's no way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So. Why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still one other way she could have gained access. What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. Wait, 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 wait. Just what do you think you're doing? Don't worry. This will make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? Well, all right then. I declare an official class trial recess. Oh, goody. For real? Now then, what is it you want to show us? If it's not 
be boring or I'll be very unhappy. Oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? So before I even knew what was happening, the class trial had been put on hold. We headed off with Kyoko in the lead. And where she took us was... Uh, can we stop looking at the body, please? The girls locker room? We've already searched this place top to bottom! What are you trying to pull, Missy? I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. Oh, uh, no. You want to check it again? Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Take your time. Examine her carefully? Like using our hands? No, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait! It's probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. It's not that I'm freaked out or anything, it's just... Based on religious grounds, you know? Very well. I'll do it. But, but you're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one of the boys do it. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. So just leave this to me. What is this? Some kind of secret girl on girl action? Is that what you two are about? Ah. Uh. Stop screwing around. Okay, here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. She's such a nice lady. Putting her hands together in a brief prayer, Sakura then began to quietly examine her body. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... What is this... Oh. She broke. What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. Sakura's eyes were staring wildly at Chihiro's lifeless form. Her massive frame trembled. This this girl is Is what? Is a boy. What? Ah, I see. So what? she is actually a he. What? Thank you for confirming this fact. Yeah. What? Of course you did. for keeping you waiting. Now then, let's resume the class trial. We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. Let's pick up from there. Yes, well, I don't know his reason for hiding it, but the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. To think that Chihiro was actually a guy. The thought had never even crossed my mind. And because the victim was male, he would have had no problem gaining access to the boys' locker room. Assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender as male, 
then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. Ah, oh, I was afraid of that. So then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boys' locker room, and was then later moved to the girls' locker room. And the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girls' locker room. So Chihiro really was killed in the boys' locker room? I still don't understand the motive for moving the body, but yes, that does seem plausible. Well, I must admit, I did find it rather odd. I knew he felt a little off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. What? This is the most titillating situation! That was just offensive. So now everything has been connected. All the mysteries have finally become clear. Have they? Okay, well, connected or clear or whatever. We still think you're the killer, remember? <sighs> very interesting. This has become very interesting indeed. Ah, he's off in his own little world. What about you, Makoto? After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya is the killer? No. Well, without a doubt, Byakuya is the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. But... But I... He might not actually be the killer after all. What? But aren't you the one who accused him in the first place? He just seems to be too easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. The way he's acting, it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... How can I put it? Overt. He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. At least, that's how I see it. And Byakuya, when you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And then again, when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy, if you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. Ah, oh, he was attracted to her. So that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but it's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct for the time being. Hey, Byakuya, traps are gay. Mark it as correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girl's locker room and decided to alter it. Are you fucking with us right now? No, I am not effing with you right now. I'm telling you the truth. Well, I find it very hard to believe. Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. If you're really telling the truth, then why? Why do you do that to his body? Ah. <sighs> My reasons hardly matter right now. Uncovering the culprit is much more important, wouldn't you say? Now then, if it wasn't me, who was it? Well... I don't think I can say for sure without talking about it a little more.
we're seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear Biafia did it. No, I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever, we need to explore every possibility. Because if we're wrong, we all die here. That's true. Very well then. I'm with you too. Damn straight. Count me in. Do you not have a mind of your own? Nope. Of course I do. What am I, an ant or something? Anyway. Oh, because I have a hive mind. As a group one more time. We still have time to make our decision. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? But if Byakuya didn't do it, then who's the real killer? Who murdered Chihiro? There's one thing we can sure be sure that we know about the killer. The killer was able to gain access to the real murder scene, which means the killer is a guy. The killer is a big gay. Since the crime scene was the boys' locker room, you would need a boys' handbook to get in. Since Leon's is apparently broken, the killer would have to have had to use their own. In other words, it had to have been a guy. But that's not enough. I need to find more clues. Round Robin gun. Celeste's what was Celeste's account? Someone saw the victim at some point. Even that. Hold on. On the night of the murder, right before nighttime, Chihiro was spotted leaving the warehouse. It seems she was stuffing some blue exercise clothes into a duffel bag. Presumably, she was on her way to exercise, but the clothes were not found at the crime scene. Celeste had not told anyone other than Makoto about this. Where are those clothes? It's over. Damn it. You want to know who saw the victim? The killer. And only the killer. No, it's wrong. I believe someone else did see the victim before he was murdered. What do you think, Celeste? Now that you mention it, yes, I did see him. Huh? Really? Be right back.
Uh, sorry, I'm back now. Makoto. The rest of you had no idea, did you? That is why you're all making such ugly noises. You're making ugly noises. Whatever. Just hurry up and tell us. It was last night, right before night time. I saw Chihiro in the dormitory warehouse. I saw him stuffing a fat jacket into a duffel bag. I didn't waste any time going back to male pronouns. And then, I assume, he headed off to exercise. That's rude. Track jacket and a duffel bag. But we didn't find anything like that at the murder scene. Kind of in a hurry, huh? Chihiro told me he was in a hurry. But why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone was waiting for him, I should think. Okay. So, Mr. Fujisaki was on his way to really? meet someone, and then they were going to work out together? But Hina and I had invited him to exercise with us plenty of times, and he always declined. Probably because he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was hiding, right? Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very much. Enough so that he was willing to risk his secret being revealed. Hey, what a marvelous friendship! The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who it was. But knowing what we know, I can't even guess. No, you already have what you need to make the connection. Do I? Huh? I don't think I do. No, I don't. Seriously? Who is it? Who's the killer? What? Are you sure about that? You really think we can figure out who did it based on two pieces of evidence that we don't have? No. Why? You want to track down some fingerprints or something? Maybe. Even if we had the equipment for that, we wouldn't know how to use it. As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe, but we can make certain inferences if we just take the time to talk it out. Easy for you to say. Yeah. But fine. Celeste, did you notice anything special about the bag or jacket? The bag was just a normal duffel bag from the warehouse. All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of tracksuits to choose from. Okay. Do you think there might be some connection between the culprit and Chihiro's jacket? Perhaps. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket he took. Does Chihiro's jacket really hold some clue about the killer? Somehow, it's really hard to believe. Exercise. So next we have to ask, 
Why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing! Okay. So, what you're saying is, the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? That's not what I wanted to do at all. My tracksuit is black. I, I don't even have a tracksuit. This exercising sucks. I have a white tracksuit, personally. I got it from the warehouse, if you must know. Did any of that really help us get any closer to figuring out who the culprit is? Uh, no. No way. Not a chance. You heard him, right? What he just said without even realizing it? How did he know something like that? What? First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask, why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing! So, what you're saying is, the killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? No, that's wrong! Hold on a second, Mondo. What did you just say? Huh? What'd I say? When Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she said... I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a, a duffel bag. And then, I assume, she headed off to exercise. She never said anything about the jacket's color. So why did you say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? Who are you? You just... Hey, Celeste. What color was Chihiro's tracksuit? As a matter of fact, it was... blue? And before we began the trial, did you tell anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. Then... Mondo, how did you know what color Chihiro's tracksuit was? Because I... I just... Oh. No, that can't be it. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our investigation. Then the only reason he could have known what color the tracksuit was is if he saw Cherry with it before he died. That's the only possibility. Cherry? Are, are you talking about your hero? So, how about it? Did you see the tracksuit or didn't you? That tongue. It's just by chance. I just happened to see it last night. He walked past me, and he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, that can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony... She stuffs the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. When Celeste noticed it, Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was completely in the back. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. It would appear you've dug your own grave. Perhaps. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit and it'll be obvious who he met with? What a bunch of nonsense. Ah, now I understand. It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. That's why you said you knew he did it, to put them on edge. That's right. However, Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. But I liked him. Why? What made you so suspicious? He's such a nice meathead. That's a good question. There was 
a certain turning point that tipped me off. Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo, but you tend to refer to men and women differently. Huh? You only call guys dude. For girls, it's chick. And after he was killed, you happened to refer to him as dude. Once I picked up on that, it occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. You didn't notice such a tiny detail? No, I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really kill Chihiro? I, 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 uh, I didn't kill anyone. You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. Uh. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Yeah, he would never do something like that. This is a false accusation. It's true. My reasoning on that is pretty shaky. That was fast. Well, this does present us with a problem. It seems we are all out of leads. <laughs> my time has nearly come. That's what my little ghost friend is telling me. What? Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Ifumi, weren't you telling me you found some evidence? Really? What kind of evidence? Ah. Uh. You know, now that I'm thinking about it here calmly, it might not be all that relevant. Good job, idiot. Jeez, does your confidence just get up and walk away? It's fine, man. Just tell us. If you really insist, then. Um. Here it is. Mm? What do you have there? It happens to be an e-handbook. I found it laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. It must belong to Chihiro, right? We know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene of the crime, right? For a fact. For a fact indeed. I was totally sure I'd found it. But it must hold some clue about the culprit, right? Well, that's what I was hoping. But it's busted. It won't even turn on. I imagine the culprit broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. That's odd. I didn't think the handbooks were quite so fragile. You're right. They're not. They're totally waterproof and shock resistant. It would take an awful lot to break one. And yet... This one does appear to be broken, as is Leon's, sitting useless in the main hall. For all your confidence, that is a remarkably high failure rate. <laughs> Do you think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere? How precisely did the handbooks get broken? There's only one possible explanation. No. Shoot. Good job. I got it. You already told us before that the handbook has one weak point, didn't you? Yeah. You remember that? And uh, uh, sure, maybe I let that slip, but I never told anyone what the weak point actually was. But if the handbook is supposed to never break, and two of them broke in quick succession, then... Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know what the weakness is, right, Monokuma? So, what is it? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. But if I tell you, and someone else decides to copy it, that would be very not good. Just tell us already. Why would we want to break our own handbooks? <sighs> oh, well, I have a weakness for pushy demands. But you're sure you will follow their example? Then allow me to make a special announcement. The weak point of my cutting-edge e-handbook is... 
When it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, it will suffer a meltdown and totally break! I flippin' knew it! You knew it? Yeah, because I found the handbook laying on the floor of the sauna. The temperature in the sauna can reach over 200 degrees. Strange how you don't get burnt, huh? It's because as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin. If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you'd definitely get fried. That layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. Wow, interesting. I learned one new fact today. That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Anyway, if you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But how'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Indeed. Quite the mystery. Not really. What if they found out by accident? What do you mean by accident? What if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, and it broke? They'd realize it was broken, of course, and it wouldn't be hard to figure out why. And once they had Chihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. I won't say it's not possible, but who would have done something like that? I don't know of anyone who took their handbook into the sauna. I might know someone who did. Whoa, seriously? I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the sauna was... Had to be the one who wore all their clothes into the sauna. Mondo Owada. Mondo, your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? What? Why? Why do you keep accusing him? Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago, remember? And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. That hair. But little did he realize, he'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. No, wait, hold on. You've got it all wrong. He would never kill. I don't accept this. Show me the proof. The actual solid proof. I mean, I don't want to believe it either, but... But I found something that proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine! See? Look! Makoto was wrong after all! Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, mm. if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine. No, it's wrong. The handbook you have right now. Is it really yours? The fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall. 
Isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's. Which would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's. Yes? That's what we just said. That says loaning out your handbook is prohibited? Well, here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student, but if they're dead, they're not a student. It's kind of a gray area, I admit. But no worries. If anything, it just makes things more interesting. As such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Okay. No, Mondo. If I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch! What's wrong, bro? C come on! Tell him he's wrong! You are wrong! You have to be wrong! Everything you just said is wrong! You made it all up! Okay, then why don't we look back on this case one more time, from the beginning? That way, everything will become clear, and we'll all see if I was right or wrong. Uh. <clears throat> oh, okay. Uh. So what have I got? So she goes to the warehouse, she goes to get changed, she gets seen. She stuffs it in the bag. Oh, that is a lot, okay. She swipes her card to get in. The weapon the killer used was... <clears throat> the killer switched around the carpet as well as something else. Hold on. Oh, okay, got it. So that goes there. That goes there. from the other locker room and switched it at the scene of the crime. Wait.
Bianca get brought into the murder scene. Right, Celeste? With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. But how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? Huh? Nighttime. She made her way to the locker room. But how could the victim, who was a simple, because she was really a key, which is why she <sighs> gained entrance to the boys' locker room. All right. <sighs> Once inside, he met with someone there. And the person he met was the one who killed him. I'm... What? The weapon the killer used was... That's so vague. Stains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unclean. What? This is so. This is the most confusing part.
Okay. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, pulling up the bloodstained carpet. Then, removing the bloody poster. And finally, carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girl's locker room without much problem. And that's exactly how the killer did it. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. <coughs> they changed the layout of the boys' and girls' locker room. In what you might call... A crime scene switch. Uh-huh. That could have been the end of things. But no. Yakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation. Making things even more complicated. So, after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library. And then he got to work. He used the cord to string up Chikiro's lifeless body. Then, using the victim's own blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. Why? Around the same time that Yakuya was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the sauna. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence, Chihiro's handbook. And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. And that's how it all played out. Wow, that's an ugly picture of Mondo. that Mondo's the killer that already revealed itself earlier in the trial. If I can somehow show where Mondo's handbook is right now, once I do that, everything will become clear. Yay, bullet time. Fever time and nega time. During a bullet time battle, if you press the space key, fever time will activate and the tempo will be forced to its max. At this point, even if you push the buttons at random, you won't miss. So you can push right mouse, left mouse, right mouse, left mouse, however you want to destroy the opponent's verbal assault. 
but this only lasts until your focus gauge runs out, so make the best possible use of your time. Of course, it wouldn't be fair if only you got access to special time, right? So we've also prepared something called Nega Time that your opponent can use. If your opponent activates Nega Time during the bullet time battle, your tempo marker will disappear, making it quite a bit tougher to hit the buttons in rhythm. If you were to activate Fever Time at this point, no, never mind, I'm sure nothing would happen. I don't know what I was worried about. Unsurprisingly, if your action difficulty is set to gentle, the opponent won't use Nega Time. Well then, good luck and have fun. Oh, great. Wait. Oh. Show me some evidence. Oh, Taka. If my thinking so far is right, Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon's. In which case, we can just check each of our handbooks right now. Once we do that, we'll. We don't gotta do that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I did it. I killed him. Did good in most of it. So that last part. Boink. Eighty-three medals. Bro, what are you saying? I got no choice here. After hearing all that, I gotta just give up. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. Ask for the goddamn verdict. Mm. Roger that. Wait, hold on. No waiting, no holding on. Time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Grab your lever and give it a yank. Who will you elect as the blackened this time around? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Mm. Uh oh this time it looks like you got it right again yes it is so the blacken that killed Shihiro Fujisaki was Mondo Iwata <sighs> In case you're wondering, the vote was not unanimous. Kiyotaka chose the wrong answer. You're treading very close to the danger zone, Mr. Ishimaru. You need to be more careful. I, I refuse to believe it. There's no way, no way he would kill someone. Sorry. What, what is this? Why are you apologizing? Why, 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 why? Why? Why did you do it? <sighs> well, it looks like Mondo's taken a vow of silence, so allow me to explain on his behalf. Actually, the sad the story of the murder this time is the sad story of two men. Oh, but for anyone who doesn't really want to hear it, you can hit the control key to fast forward the text. <laughs> what? <laughs> but I do want to hear it. Anyway, there was once a young boy. 
and his name was Chihiro Fujisaki. He had an extreme inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. You're so weak, even though you're a boy. He'd heard things like that since as long as he could remember, and he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he tried to hide and buried himself further and further into that weakness. To take on the fragile form of a petite young girl. He had chosen that as his way out. Mm. Now nobody will be able to say anything about even though you're a boy. But no matter how tightly he wrapped himself up in that shell, the inferiority complex had already taken root deep inside of him and was not so easily weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex didn't disappear. Instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. I'm weak. Weak, 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 weak. Once the killing game had begun here at the school, he had no choice but to accept this fact. After all, this world is survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you don't survive. And then the lovely and hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. Which of course included Chihiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more than willing to divulge. Even though he dresses like a girl, Chihiro is actually a boy. Hey, um... And that was something Chihiro couldn't let anyone find out, no matter the cost. If that was revealed, it would be the end. The hardened shell would crack, the armor would fall away. Without a doubt, those around him would torture him more than ever before. Everyone figured being thrust into such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. And yet... Sorry. I don't really want to talk about it right now. <clears throat> I also don't want to leave things the way they are. So maybe I can talk about it later? After I try my best to become strong, then I can tell everyone. Annoyingly, he used the threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. That's right. Now's my chance. I want to change. <clears throat> I'm going to get stronger. And accept who I am. Strong enough so that when someone says, even though you're a boy, I'll be okay. I'll get better. With that thought at the front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. And so... That day, he made the commitment to begin exercising. He was prepared to retrain his mind and body. But sadly, that would be his first and only chance he would get at it. When he decided to start exercising, he thought it would be good to ask for someone's help. But he wanted to tell that person his secret first, and then ask them to help him from there. And the person he went to... Yeah, that's right. It was me. <laughs> it sure was. The biker gang fella had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were. So Chihiro probably figured that even if he confided in Mondo, his honor would make him keep the secret. Plus, Mr. Macho Mondo was the very symbol of a strong man that Chihiro had always aspired to. Maybe talking to Mondo about it will help give me some courage. So he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. That was his aspiration. And he thought that only with Mondo's support would he ever be able to come close to that. Correct. So then, that must be why Mondo did what he did to keep the promise he'd made to Chihiro. Huh? Did what he did? You mean, that's why Mondo carried Chihiro from the boys' locker room to the girls' locker room? Indeed. Yes, that is exactly what I mean. Um... Wasn't that a cover-up what he'd done? Certainly. That could have been part of it, but I don't think that was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men he'd made to Chihiro. But how does moving the body keep his secret? Because... If everyone knew he'd been killed in the boys' locker room, then everyone would have been arguing about how she got into the boys' locker room, right? 
Once that started up, at least a few of us would have immediately begun to suspect his identity. So, he tried to protect Shihiro's secret by putting him in the girls' locker room and stealing his handbook. See? Then, Mondo did all that to keep the promise he'd made to Chihiro, who he'd also killed. But why would he do that? The more I hear you talk, the more I don't understand. I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? So why? Why did you... Because, no matter what, I didn't want anyone to know. I knew it. So that's what triggered it, after all. The possibility of having your embarrassing memories and secrets exposed. What, what is this? That's impossible. Nothing could have been that bad. Something he didn't want anyone to know, even if it meant killing someone. You're wrong. It's impossible. Don't make me repeat myself. How many times must I repeat myself? To judge others by your own standard is the height of folly. Even if you can't comprehend it, he obviously can. That's all there is to it. <laughs> well, while we're on the subject, why don't I tell you? That embarrassing memory? That secret he didn't want anyone to know? Hey, um... You know what Mondo did? He killed his own brother. I'm sorry, what? Mondo, the ultimate biker gang leader, makes all the hoodlums and riffraff across the country tr tremble. His gang is called Crazy Diamond. He's a Jojo. But the only reason he had the chance to join a gang in the first place was because of a certain someone. Mondo's older brother's name was Daya Awada. Mondo had nothing but respect for him. It was because of Daya that Mondo ever got on a motorcycle. Mondo's brother was his only family growing up. He was the only one Mondo could trust or respect. He wanted to measure up to his big brother, so he imitated him in everything he did. Mondo was the epitome of the starry-eyed kid brother. Meanwhile, the charismatic older brother had put together a local motorcycle gang. And before anyone knew it, it had grown into the biggest biker gang in the country. Daya, the older brother, number one in the gang, and his number two, his younger brother Mondo. In the beginning, everything was peaches and gravy. That's disgusting. But when Mondo started to think about how he would have to take over the gang from his brother someday, his brother's greatness, his reputation, began to gnaw on Mondo's very soul. <sighs> Who's gonna take over for Daya, huh? Daya created this gang with his bare hands. Mondo's just along for the ride. Can someone like that really be our leader? All that'll do is make the gang look bad. Almost every day, Mondo heard the gossip and whispers of the other members of the gang. Which is why... I... I just... I gotta get stronger. Stronger than Daya. Just once. Just one time. No matter what, I gotta win. Don't fuck with me. I don't care what it takes. I gotta come out on top. And on the night of his amazing brother's retirement ceremony, Mondo challenged him to a street race. But during the race, tragedy struck. The kid brother pushed ahead with reckless abandon, eager for victory, and dashed into oncoming traffic. But suddenly... But that was an accident. Laying in his kid brother's arms, the older brother delivered his final words. M my bad, kid. I fucked up. Sorry. Of course, he knew it was his brother's fault, but Daya never blamed him for what happened. Hey, kid. The rest is up to you. No matter what, you gotta keep the gang together. Because it's the team you and me put together. It's a, a promise between men. He decided to hide the truth of what happened from everyone else in the gang in order to keep the gang together and keep the promise to his brother. He could never admit to anyone that it was his own weakness that had caused the accident. And as a result, 
the team was made even stronger under the banner of the kid who'd bested his big brother. Daya was going to lose to his kid brother, so he got stupid and got himself killed. That became the explanation for what happened. Mondo's lie became the truth. He wanted to lead the team so bad he was willing to tell all kinds of lies about his brother. I... I just... I'm... strong. Strong, 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 strong. And yet... As soon as our killing game began, he realized, no matter how tough he pretended to be, he was just another weakling that could die in an instant. <laughs> and then the lovely, the hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. And that at that point, it was clear I would have no problem shedding light on his secret. Mondo killed his own older brother. N no matter what. I couldn't let the other gang members find out. If that happened, everything would have been ruined. Everything me and my brother had worked to, hug, worked to create would have been destroyed. His death, all the guilt I'd been carrying around, it would have, it all would have been for nothing. So that's why... That's, that's why I... I... Mondo. After what I saw... After I saw what Monokuma had on me. My head filled up with a kind of fuzzy uneasiness, and just started swirling around. I'd never felt anything like it before. I... I just... I didn't know what to do about it. I wasn't sure what to think or say, but after a while, that fuzzy uneasiness... It turned itself into a rock-hard lump of anxiety, way down in my stomach. And it was right around then that Chihiro asked me to start working out with him. And right there, I... He told me a secret. Seriously? Jesus. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry I lied to you. But why? Why now? Why are you telling me this all of a sudden? Because, huh? I mean, you've kept that secret all this time, right? If anyone found out, you would... But You're right, but... I want to change. I wrap myself in lies. I'm weak. I want to destroy that version of me forever. His words were like a knife in my gut. I felt like he was exposing the lie I'd been living myself. I have to change. I don't want to be weak anymore. You're so strong. It can't hurt you, right? Whatever secret Monokuma might tell us. You piece of... So what? You're saying I should just say it? You're saying if I really what? am, I should just be able to tell everyone my secret? Huh? I was jealous. I was jealous of Chihiro's strength. He had the strength to face his own weakness, to try and overcome it. It was the kind of strength I'd never had. So I was jealous of him. And that jealousy broke me. Why? Are you making yes. fun of me? I'm strong. Are you fucking with me right now? I'm not making fun of you. You really are strong, Mondo. I felt like I could hear something starting to creak. Something inside my head. What did he want me to do? What was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to just sit back, let my secret get revealed, and ruin everything? What's wrong? Why did you have to tell me all that? Are you trying to rub my failure in my face? I, I just really admire you. I admire your strength. Yeah, that's right. I am strong. Strong. I'm strong. Strong, 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 strong. Stronger than you. you son of a and stronger bitch. than Daya. I don't remember anything after that. When I woke up again, he was laying at my feet, covered in blood. I had the dumbbell in my hand, and I was just staring at him, down on the ground. Hey! I... I killed, killed him. I killed Chihiro. Even after all this time, I'm still just as weak as I've always been. And thanks to that, I did something I can never take back. Mondo. He was normally so aggressive, so angry. 
He hid that weak side away from everyone. That was his secret. A weakness like that lived in a heart like his, and it turned him cold-blooded. God damn it! Look at him, you see? You're all just like him! For a secret from the past, for a memory! For that he killed another living human in cold blood! He couldn't cut free from his regrets from the outside world. He doesn't know what true strength is. Do you see hope anywhere in there? Cause I sure don't. You bastard. Just shut up, you son of a bitch. Go ahead, say that again, I dare you. Yep. Okay, I'll say it as many times as I want, is what I want to say. But, unfortunately I can't do that right now. Cause it's time for the punishing. Punishing. You mean execution? Well now, well now, well now, well now. That's what I promised you, right? The blacken that disturbs the peace will be punished. Ridiculous. Oh, hold on. Now then, I prepared a very special punishment. For Mondo Awada, the ultimate biker gang leader. Yeah. No, wait, wait. This is hard to watch. I said, wait! Sorry, man. I couldn't keep the promise we made. From one man to another. Oh. I'm on a coma. The fuck? Oh. How are you gonna kill him in there? The cage of death. Okay. What? What even happened? Laugh at death and your soul will forever be at peace. It can't be. My brother. Another murder and another execution. I want to feel again. Everyone's lives are taken so lightly here. I feel like I might be going mad. Maybe I'll just let it happen. Yeah, like that. Way to record the same scream one time and just keep using it. As Taka's sad screams invaded our skulls, we were each forced to realize once again. But he, of course, of course he had to. What a disappointment. This is the end of the game. Byakuya. You're completely insane, you know that? A game? One of our friends is dead. Do you realize that? Naturally. Of course I do, because this game is life or death. Hey. I don't have anything to say to you. I don't have a response, except that However. I just don't understand why. Why did you go out of your way to disguise Mondo's crime? What? Why? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Because it made things more interesting. 
His voice was calm, emotionless, like the voice of death. It chilled me to the bone. <laughs> Last night, when the murder took place, I was in the library as usual. Honestly. So you would ignore you ignored the nighttime rule too. <laughs> that rule never mattered to me. I don't recall agreeing to it. There is nothing to well, I don't particularly care. Please continue. The night grew late, and I decided to return to my room, which is when I stumbled upon him. I spotted Mondo coming out of the girl's locker room. After he'd gone, I looked inside and saw the corpse. You mean you actually witnessed the murder, man? He was such a fool. He didn't have the slightest idea that I'd seen him. So, you're saying you knew who the culprit was from the very beginning? That's right. Indeed. But if that had been the end of it, how boring would that have been? I mean, what a waste of time to have the answer revealed right at the beginning. <laughs> Which is why I decided to lend a little helping hand. I thought it would liven things up. You did all that to liven things up. I see. So after hearing about Genocide Jack from Toko, you decided to use that to create the fake murder scene. But... Damn, man. If we hadn't figured out who'd really done it, you would have been dead too, right? <laughs> well, obviously, I would have revealed the truth before it reached that point. Of course. Byakuya turned and looked me in the eye. I could feel his sharp eyes piercing into me. <laughs> Thanks to a certain remarkable someone, it never did. And I was able to perform an interesting experiment. Interesting. Once I do decide to become blackened, I now know who I'll have to watch out for. What? Correct. So that was your reason. Okay. Are you satisfied? Indeed. Yes, we're done listening to your story. Moving on. Hey. There's something I'd like to ask Monokuma. What's this? Oh, I'm up next. You. you like to perform these elaborate executions each time, correct? My question is, why? <laughs> Do you like them? But you know, this punishment, this despair, it's not just for you. <laughs> all this punishment, all this despair is my gift to mankind itself. What? You're over-exaggerating. I am not over-exaggerating. These punishments are meant to transform all hope into despair. Damn. What do you mean? 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 Mean, 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 mean. Good grief, I don't understand why you have to pick apart every little stupid thing. Whatever, it doesn't matter. In the end, I'm going to stand alone as the victor. And then everything will be revealed to me. Ah, the noble son of a noble family. Truly, you understand me. <laughs> I think this is the start of a terrifying friendship. Shut up. I would never stoop to the level of a childish criminal like you. Let me just say this. After I have achieved complete victory, you're up next. I'm going to find you and kill you, understand? In the name of my family. For which victory is a foregone conclusion. You're getting all riled up! It's likely you're the main character of a video game or something. No trash mob for you. I swear, whatever it takes, I will kill you. <laughs> temper, temper. Sounds like someone needs a nap. <laughs> Monokuma's laughter peeled across the courtroom, and the courtroom closed on the case of Chihiro Mondo. But I knew that wasn't the end. The killing game would still continue because the mastermind wouldn't let it end. For those of us who were still alive, our worst fear and despair kept on multiplying. It was the kind of despair that felt like a blind puppy in hell had more, than, more of a future than us. All of our courage, our effort, our friendship, it felt like it amounted to nothing at all. It was the worst kind of despair. Hello. Well, anyway, like I was saying... This is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. 
Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? What? <laughs> Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. How can the bear with no fingers do a cat's cradle? I went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? Well, no biggie. Nothing we can do about it now. So just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? After all, that's what everyone wants to see. I'm sorry. There's one thing I'd like to ask you. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away. Who is it? The 16th high school student, I mean. My, my. You really took me by surprise there. I know I said you could ask anything, but... Super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied. Because you see, that's my ace in the hole. And nobody be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their friends. <laughs> hmm. The end. Oh goody, ten people left. Stupid bear. The crazy diamond present. I'm gonna stop there.